find, namely peace in the atomic thermal nuclear age. It is a poignant irony that peace, which was consecrated by the song of the heavenly host at the beginning of the Christian era, peace, whose author is celebrated as God himself in the Anglican service of morning prayer. Peace has in our time become for many Americans a dirty word, something made in Moscow to dupe the simple-minded, a synonym for appeasement, a chivalrous for the disloyal, the subversive, the unpatriotic, and the un-American. For all that, you know and I know that the world has never been in greater need of peace. War since Nagasaki and Hiroshima has become a luxury that the human race can no longer afford. War is public enemy number one for all the peoples of this earth and that includes Russians as well as Americans. Only less dangerous than full-blown war is the kind of preparation for war that is now being made in those two great centers of power, the cities of Washington and Moscow. From the Kremlin came the announcement last September of the resumption of nuclear testing in the Arctic with the consequent pollution of the Earth's atmosphere by fallout. From the Pentagon and the White House came the order last month, April, for Americans to resume nuclear testing in the Pacific, which we may be sure will add to the already dangerous potency of strontium-90 in the very air we breathe here and now. You and I see that there is no security for anyone on this planet in the insane armaments race in which the governments of the USSR and the USA are engaged. You are protesting.
Are you for unilateral secession of nuclear testing? Joe? Well, I'm not sure that as far as practical power politics goes, I think one should try to be realistic to, towards this, that unilateral is necessarily the best way to go about this. But that doesn't mean I'm not willing to give some consideration to the political prestige which Russia might uh, suffer if America should uh, disarm herself and uh, thus create a, a Russian loss of face. I see. One last question. What do you think this particular protest march is going to accomplish? I think that it'll get people to think it's already done that if you, you attended the rally up here and you could see that some people there were definitely thinking about this and were concerned. And I think that is probably our main purpose in the whole thing. It has aroused a lot of interest from people who, even though they do not march and do not believe in this type of a procession, they are, have shown concern and support for a emphasis on the dangers of nuclear warfare.